Welcome to the Madness! Hey, how's it going? Denise Deffy, and welcome to another episode of Pathfinder Kingmaker. Right, okay, so in the last episode, we came, well, we pretty much explored the rest of the city of Hollow Eyes. We found some more battles, we found some more treasure, but also we ran into the children that we were looking for, which are pretty big children, to say the least. I was expecting little kids, not like teenagers near enough young adults. But the centaurs beat us to them. So it was a little bit of an awkward meetup again. But luckily, a good intimidation check was all we needed in order to sort of disfuse the situation. So that's cool, so they're away and all ends it ends well. And we came across a blue dragon. We came across a blue dragon that was apparently doing battle with this Ilfa, Il Ilf card or something. Can't really remember. But basically, he was injured. And he was asking for some help, but we did complete a crystal puzzle, which gave us a wand of heal, to which we gave to the dragon, which he was going to ask for anyway. And he's been healed up by Yuzovsky, but he did give us a couple of good goodies. So now the goal is we need to get back to Vanhold and determine what our next course of adventure is going to be. So we're going to have to leave from, well, we could leave from here because right here there's a Manticore fight. But to tell you the truth, I spent enough time fighting in this area. I just want to get out of here. Yeah. So, there is an area X over here. So, there could be some more treasure. There could be some more whatever. And we could fight for experience and all that. But to tell you the truth. Yeah, we've uh, we fought enough. we fought enough in this place. So, yeah, I hope everyone's doing well today. So, yeah. So, I kind of just want to focus mainly on the story today if possibly. Because, like I said, the last few fights, the last few episodes, we're just doing non-stop fights. Which, to be honest with you, it's, it's to be expected because, you know, it is a CRPG and, you know, we need fights for experience and we need experience for levels and all that. So, you know, it's what it is. Right, is there anything else that we could... Ooh, yeah, I did miss some things, actually. Okay, turquoise, uh, clear quartz, side gate, two gold coins. Take that. Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the... Yeah, let's take some of the stuff... To which we could sell our defenders. Because obviously we're not going to be using this stuff. Outside of our own party members anyway. So we'll take what we can. Still medium. I guess we could take. Okay, now we're heavy, but I think we can still go, right? Because we could just sell these to the, uh, the merchants. Doesn't look like we're encumbered. Not quite. Um, that's thirty pounds. We could take that. That's eight pounds. We could take that. Heavy. Yeah, that's all for the encumbrance. Okay, because like I said, we're heading back to Barnhold now, so. We can sell some stuff at the vendors and maybe we can get some more stuff. What I do need to pick up, however, is some potions of inflict minor wounds for uh, Kingsley. Because he's undead, as we found at the other episode. So, you know, I don't want him getting damaged by healing by mistake. So, <laughs> yeah, we need to get a couple of those. Uh, apart from anything else, there might be some wands we could probably get. Maybe a wand of fireball or a wand of healing, some like that. Um, maybe get some scrolls. Maybe some magic trinkets that could hopefully work out. There's a few things we can take. Wonderful. Now the centaur barbarians have added themselves to our already too long list of problems. We'd best order long pikes for the infantry and beef up the fortifications. Or we could avoid fighting them and save the money for something more urgent than battling barbarians. I believe we should set up a camp for the night. Oh, we should. All right, let's begin resting. But seriously though, this is what I mean in one of the other episodes. I really wish there was a mod that gave us this kind of automation for the main story. Or at least an option for automation for travelling and stuff, you know what I mean? I don't know, it just makes it feel a little more streamlined because... Great. Make it feel a little bit more streamlined for the player, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of places you can go to when you're playing the main campaign and... I can imagine new players or casual players maybe stumbling into an area they're not supposed to be in. That's happened to me a few times. 
But that is why I save after every encounter and before going into every area. But this didn't give me a chance to save it unless I can, so we'll see. Are you ready on the escape key? <laughs> yes, like so. Okay, well, I was expecting to go straight to Vanhold. I don't know why we're going this way, because I thought we were heading back to Vanhold. I think that's what we're doing, right? Yeah, we're turning to Vanhold. Oh, I don't like this. What's going on? See, we're, we're over encumbered, so we can't fight, really. Okay, what's happening? Oh, fuck. Of course. Get your paws off me, Carrion! Fucking hell giants. Right. This is what I mean by over encumbered because we can't take it, we can't do a full movement. Uh, well, let's do what we can, I guess. Alright, let's go straight in then. <laughs> Miss. Perfect. And also mention, I think, is that fatigue? I know, so Sacrobat. Oh, I meant to turn this off. There we go. Okay, um. Well, I guess we healed though, which is pretty good. Um, right. Let's just go some lead blades then. And then we'll get ready for the attack next turn. Uh, Leopard, yep. Straight in here if we can. Good hit. Not bad. Right, Cephal. Um, Cephal, what do you want to do? Should we fireball this? We could do. Not to mention because the big old actually. Um zombie cyclops. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Lovely. Uh what's their deck save? Their reflex save is plus four. So really, I'm hoping that this could be enough to do uh proper damage. Let's have a look. Uh 16 to 33, so one of them succeeded, but the other one failed. But that was a good damage. Very good damage. Okay. Okay, perfect. Right. Um, yeah, we can't get around to the side just yet, so let's move over here. Let's attack. But let's take off the fight defensively first. Actually, show what? I'm going to cast Great Invisibility. They'll set us up for sneak attacks in the uh, the next round. Okay, Bagur, Bajur, Bajur, however you want to pronounce it. Um, I think I'll stick to Bajur from now on. I know it's supposed to be Scandinavian, but... I don't know, I like the French twist. <laughs> Vigia. Vigia. Something. Um, right. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Uh, we could just... Haze of Dreams. Not your Nelly. Flare Burst. For... That's a for one minute. Uh, Fortitude save. But Fortitude, that's still pretty good, if I'm not mistaken. Fortitude is a plus five. Hmm. Possibly, but that would use up my one casting per day, so I'd rather save it for emergencies. Um, I don't think... Oh, actually, whole person might work. Sure, let's try it on the, more, the one with more HP. Let's have a look. Immune. Actually, did it say it was immune? Did it say it was immune? Um... Mind affecting? Possibly. Maybe that's under it. Uh, no, I want to read the spell description, please. Right, yeah, spell descriptors, mind affecting compulsory. Right, okay, makes sense. Okay, so Fexus, uh, let's go Beacon of Evil. Increase AC, and then let's get in as much as we can. We'll start attacking next turn. Jesus, now that is some damage. That was some damage, holy spit. Okay, right, well, I guess we're doing a full attack then. Hits, miss. The bite hit, very nice. Okay, when you we can move an attack. Very good. Stand down. Yeah, I should finish him off, he thinks. Twelve. Ooh, one HP on the leopard. <laughs> one HP in a dream. Okay, that's one dead. Uh right, let's wait. Alright. Don't need to waste any more ability, so let's go with uh Acid Dart 14. Miss with a wand, very nice. Okay. Make your van, so yours. Sneak attack, sneak attack. Very good. 
Uh, yep, we don't need waste anything, so let's keep attacking. Miss. So Vexus, you do the same. Thank you. Right, well, holy spit. Willis Gunnison. Oh, it's this guy. Huh, yeah. From, um... The Candlemere quest, I think. Maybe it is. Or it could be with the, meme, the missing brother. I don't really remember. I, I recognise his face in the name, though. Willis Gunderson. The man you just say catches his breath and smiles brightly, as if he hasn't just been zigzagging his way from his pursuers. His clothing and equipment are an odd mix of quality, durable items, and pompous decorative elements. Even this, his shirt seems cut specifically to provide an obstructive view of his chest. <laughs> <laughs> which is adored with two golden chains. Baron Vaughn, your grace! What you meeting you here? Until now, I met only unexpected guests on my morning escapades. Mega smiles warmly at the stranger and extends his hand in friendship. As to an equal. He also stands in such a way to capture the stranger's attention while not blocking your view or settles. Greetings! And you are... Willis Gunderson, your grace. Apparently flattered by the attention, the peculiar man strikes a, po a proud pose. Scientist, traveller, and research of antiquities at your service. It is a pleasure to see my barony attract such educated people, and it's most regrettably that they must face such difficulties. Mega nods towards the dead, now entirely dead, <laughs> Cyclops. Where did that creature come from? I have no idea. Willis' voice seems tranquil. I was joined of you in taking notes when an ill-mannered simpleton stepped into my light. I politely asked him to step aside and allow me to finish, but he wouldn't listen, and when I turned around, I, I knew he couldn't have, for zombies have as much reason as manners. Yeah, let's do a perception. So, as long as we don't roll a 1, this is a, an auto-succeed. Yeah, 17. <laughs> we actually rolled a 1! Right. <laughs> Ah, okay, right, okay, that makes a lot of sense. So, what I was thinking was, I was thinking if we rolled a nat 1, that would be an automatic failure regardless, right? But I guess in Kingmaker, at least, with these checks, even if we roll a 1, if our skill value is above the DC, it's an auto-succeed anyway. <laughs> Interesting. Um, well, Maker entertains travelling conversation. You carefully examine his gear and clothes. The first thing that strikes your attention is an intricate yellowish jade bracelet on his wrist. You can tell his ragged state that Willis has been on the road for at least a few days and indeed, from all appearances, mostly off note. Okay, we got plus 14. Stealthily draw. Yeah, stealthily draw, self-fill Omega's attention and nod towards the bracelet. The Grey Wizard, listening closer to the conversation, notices your jester. Cast a quick glance at the bracelet and nods. Well, now this Cyclops is much more polite, isn't he? Make it false quiet for a moment, allowing you to add a few words to the conversation. Yeah, trip with Kill. I'll say you call it no clothes, let him try. He's basically where he's in the game, so my friend. Um, Diplomacy 20. Let's have a look. 17. Willis, aren't you um, cold in those clothes? Not that I don't enjoy the view. Alright. Stuart Kingsley, you tiger. We barely saved the lad and you're already sinking your claws into him. Alright. <laughs> and such wicked sharp claws. And if one would be smitten. William Gunderson returns to your interested look, obviously flattered by your attention. Ooh, okay. Um... I think it's probably best if we do butter her up for now, to some degree. Sure, I mean... Sure. So, you're a specialist in uh, antiquities. What a coincidence. I'm also interested in them. Of course. Would you like to look at an amusing item for my collection? Willis takes off the bracelet and presents it to you, while carefully standing so the light flatters him. Nice. This knick-knack is my latest found. I I found it on the river shore. It would seem the water vanished, uh, washed out some ancient burial mode. No doubt it's very ancient. And may have serious scientific value. I haven't dated it precisely yet. You must understand such things take time, but I swear, 
Desta herself guided my hand. Mako approaches and pats the lad on the shoulder, gently taking the bracelet from Willis's hands before he can eject. This is quite interesting. The barony doesn't yet boast of its scientific achievements, but I think we can find a specialist who should be able to determine the bracelet's origin. If this is a precious item, your efforts in finding it will also be generously rewarded. Here, take this in advance. He takes a purse from his belt and hands it to Willis. Where did you say you found it? Hmm. Crafty, but will he take it? Uh, but by the river. Willis seems taken aback by the expropriation. Expropriation? Expropriation? Never heard of that word before. Of the bracelet, a regains his smile while he feels the weight of the purse he's been handed. I'm only happy to find it any way I can, Baron Vaughan. With your connections, we surely discover the origin of this find. And meanwhile, I may employ my time on something just as useful. Did you know that besides scientific articles, I also write fiction? And I cannot pass the opportunity to write about the exploits of the Varning host and chronicle your first steps as a Baron. Your wouldn't mind, would you? That, right, that's what Willis's journal comes into with the menu. So long as you don't ask me to sit for a portrait, Vega laughs infectiously. I was born to a noble family, so my childhood was wasted on sitting with my mother and my brothers for a train of grand portraits. I was only spared the torture after I covered my waistcoat in tar and lit my petty feathered beret on fire. <laughs> Lovely. So as long as you spare me such torments, Willis, I don't mind what you do. We should find some place to settle the van hold and get to work. I will send word when I receive news about the bracelet. As you wish, Your Grace. It was a pleasure to meet you and your companions. Willis Gunderson gives you a curious look and then turns and walks off the direction of Varnhold, still hefting the purse in his hand. Okay. Interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Mm. Just by the way. Mm. Maker follows him with his eyes for a time to scoff. That went well. Of course the lad is lying through his teeth. But we got more from him than we might have hoped. Van looks pensively at the bracelet. Yeah. Why did you invite this Gunderson to Vanhold already? Do we really need even more foolish treasure hunters in this backwater? My mercenary gut. Nine times out of ten, when my gut tells me he keeps my eyes peeled, the situation is about to get bad. Of course, there's always the tank for time. And my gut is merely predicting a severe hangover. <laughs> I don't think that's the case this time. Make a frowns for a moment. Maybe Gunderson really is just this charming chatterbox and ran into that dead cyclops by accident. Maybe this bracelet is a simple piece of jewellery, but something in the story does not sit right. Mm. I suspect that Gunderson lied about fighting the by a river. He clearly had been wandering for days through dungeons by the look of him. Yeah. <laughs> Did I tell you, Seffel? There's something wrong here. Yeah. Shall we go then? What's a story? We hardly solved our problems with the centaurs, and we already got a whole new riddle. And a personal chronicle are along with it. We should look more closely at his paltry rhymes, Sifil. Take the bracelet and see what you can make of it. Stuart, keep an eye on our new friend. Visit him in Varnhold when you're at the time. Maybe you'll manage to pry something else out of him. That's it. That's it. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Manage your, maybe you'll manage to pry something else of him. That's it. Let's move. Yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't see the full stop then. I thought it was a comma. Well... Look into William Gunderson. So yeah, we've got a journal. Where else is journal? There's an errand. Interesting. Alright, first of all. Um, yeah, I think I'll do. Alright, let's have a look and see if there's any other things here. There might be some treasure or something. Alright, well, I'm not going to lie. The... Ooh. Well, did I tell you? What did I tell you? I thought someone else was over here. Right, uh, make a van. Let's have a look. How many turns left of the visibility do you have? Two rounds. Oh, one round, sorry. So I think our best bet is to actually charge this if we can. That way we can get a critical hit and a sneak attack. Perfect. And then we go fight defensively. Ooh, this place is bigger than I thought it'd be. Okay. There's concealment, very nice. Oh, that's, yeah, that's also another thing I want to talk about as well. Um, the Tenebrious Dungeons, Tenebrious Dungeons, the, uh, the other DLC. Okay, so I learned something the other day. Apparently, 
Now, I don't know about what kind of endings this place has, this, uh, this game has, right? Attack. But, apparently, there is an item in that dungeon, right at the end, that can apparently unlock a true ending to the game, right? Now, I've been having a little bit of a think about this, and I've been thinking, am I going to do the dungeons, am I not? Now, I'm not entirely too sure. I'm not too sure whatsoever. See, if I am going to do the dungeons, the way it's structured out, I don't think I'll be able to do it at my current level. Because we went into the, uh, me. Missing this. uh, because we went into the second floor and we got our asses kicked. So that just means that we need some higher levels and maybe some better armor and equipment. But also I heard that, well, I was looking at the forums and a lot of people were saying, don't bother with the dungeons. You know, it's only for, not metagamers, but it's definitely not wish, not worth your time, you know? And apparently the ending, the true ending, is not that much different to the normal ending. So, I'll have to think about things. I think I can do the dungeon with, let's say, the uh, just with a lot of characters, because with a bag of tricks, I'm not going to bring the menu up, but with the, uh, the bag of tricks mod, you can add your reserve party members into your main party without, like, you know, whatever, like, you know, so the, you can add more party members than you're allowed to, that's what I'm going to say. So, maybe, so maybe down the line, so I'm thinking maybe, like, down the line, I might do that. So all the characters that we created, just bring them all in, and then we could just probably just go through the dungeons that way. I mean, we'll see. see how I feel, but I'm not doing the dungeons at all. Not yet, anyway. And to be honest, I don't even know if I will do the dungeons. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, the game's long enough as is, but yeah, we'll see. I could do the dungeons as bonus content, like, later on down the line. When, you know, when maybe when I've played a few other games, maybe I might treat it as, like, season two or something. But we'll see. Okay, anyway, I need to focus on the, uh, I need to focus on the, um, need to focus on the fight here. Because our leopard's dead. Or oh, it's on the floor. Okay, right. Enough, uh, enough waffling. Right, so let's save that off. Let's do this. Time is over. Ooh, why is the guy's AC? 20. Alright. Be spells for that. Let's go. Sorry. Sethil's chop block of him. Uh... Yeah, let's finish him off. Good night. Sphexus. Good hit. Yeah, go on then. You gotta take him on. Good hit. Right, can we charge? Yes, we can. Perfect. Good hit. Opportunity tax. No opportunity tax. Hmm. Must have that one ability. Right. I think we can just finish this off now. It's just one person. Alright. Come on, guys. Anytime. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Right. Let's go clear. Let's go clean the spoils of war then. Okay, so we have a silver chain, a copper ring, two old maps, and gold powder, incense, two gold coins. Um, do we have anything? Scroll Divine Favor, we could use that. Silver Spoon, and that's a javelin. Yeah, sure, we could take the javelin. Nightmare, Skeletal, Champion, Archer. Composite Long Ball, Scale Mail. Uh, no, nothing here. Okay, so there is some loot up this way. Perfect. Okay, fine feather, eagle coins, six rations. Yeah, that's gonna take us right over because rations are rations are quite uh, quite heavy. <laughs> so we need to leave some things. Uh, right, say what? Let's leave some of these breastplates. We don't really uh, need them. So we need to clear up another five, I think. 
There we go, now we can move. Yeah, it's just two breastplates, sorry. Let's ex explore the rest of the place. Nope, alright, let's go down this way. Yeah, I know, we're heavy encumbrant. But, Sage, we're, we're almost there anyway. I think, anyway, unless the game wants to throw us another bloody encounter. check. Okay, two gold, silver earrings, we could crew crease, but we'll just take the gold, we'll leave the rest. Alright, so it's like that's a dead end, that's fine. There we go, there's the way out. Okay, cool. Oh! Potion of step. Nice. Tread lightly. I need to start using a little bit more potions more often. I'm trying to. They're actually really good buffs. Okay, yep, just leave. Guess we have a full inventory. I'll tell you something, that bag of holdings helped out. Need to see if we can get multiple of them. Also, it'll be very interesting to see if I can maybe transfer some of these items over to the main file. That would be interesting. Definitely those brutes are creeping death. They will be on deafness feet. Greater visibility. Attacking six times at range. <laughs> yep, six attacks to sneak attack. Beautiful. I don't know why we're going this way. Why are you just go down the same road again? Oh, Jesus bloody Christ. Not even a rest or anything. Okay, here we go. Now you, my dear readers, I finally learned how I... Willis Gunderson, author of this tale, first entered the acquaintance of Baron Vaughn and his companions. But as much as I would like to delve into this remarkable meeting, I must remind myself that by no means am I the main character of this book. Perhaps one day it will occur to Baron Vaughn, or the General, to mention me in the memoirs, but surely our encounter must have made an impression upon them as well. As fate would hard to have it, the party has another adventure before returning to Varnhold. Having decided to take a shortcut, they found themselves in an area with a strange furrows which crisscrossed the ground here and there. Bavin Vaughn and his companions are cautious and approach unnoticed as a young centaur whoop and leap from one furrow to another. At, after a moment, Baron Vaughn prepares to call out to the creature. Um... <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a lose-lose. If you look up in silence, you might spot us and be like, Oh, what are you doing? Or, ah, do you want bets? So let me know that we're here. Cephal tries to... Uh... Yeah. But the General and Cephal Lorenzo shake their heads and the Baron exhales quietly. The party long gone in silence. Oh, shit. The centaur frolics down the path and straight into trouble as it turns out. Another leap, and the ground explodes in a mountain of dirt and stone, and the muzzle of a great, great monster suddenly appears uh, straight out of the earth, right under the centaur's tender hoofs. They are the Lord Nick's Jack, DC 20 but roll of 13. Even the seasoned veterans of the Varning Holtz could have never seen a more menacing beast. The terrifying centaur manages to twist away and escape with his life. Monstrous jaws have cut deep wounds on his legs and side, but at least I've crushed them. The boy's painful scream echoes through the air while the dull, grumbling beast prepares for an attack. Ivan Vaughn takes up his sword, steadfast, steadfast, on settling the master himself. Um, ability 20 leads the charge, relying on his various attacker skills and artful maneuvers. Still 20, the general touches the baron on the sleeve and quickly whispers his plan, suggesting the crush him silently rather than rush at full speed. To tell you the truth, here's the thing. If we stealth it, we'll be fine, but that young centaur boy will get killed. I know he will. But if we go in for the charge and distract him while he gets away, I have a feeling this is going to sweeten up our relationship with the centaur, so let's go straight in. The general leads the charge, relying on his vigorous attacking skills and artful maneuvers. Succeed the mobility check. 
Nice, 30, <laughs> 17 for a 32. The team attacks in full force. They surround the monster and take it from all sides, while distracting it from its chewed cloven prey. What a marvellous dance of death it was. Their swords and spells cut through the trembling dun sword air, like lightning bolts across the stormy sky. But the beast is clever. I quickly realise that the circumstances are turning in its disfavour. It begins to dig once more into the ground. Um, the general and the Baron exchange glances and silently attack the beast. Nod silently and attack the beast with a finishing blow. The Baron's ready to continue the chase, but the general widely knows he will soon perish from its wounds in every case. No, let's let's finish this guy off now. The general and the Baron exchange glances. Nod silently attack the beast with a finishing blow. Could this monster withstand the united attack of these battle-hardened comrades? Yes, it could, but be a decisive no. With the second blow, it roars one final time, and then its lifeless flesh sinks into the ground. Another glorious victory for the Valning Host. So we get um, 11 blow it bone plates and diamond dust. Nice. Okay, nice experience. The General and the Baron eyed the battlefield. Despite the victory, the young centaur is losing blood quickly and has but moments for me to live. Uh. Yeah, luckily the team has a means to aid. Yeah, we're not going to leave him, are we? Baron Fang greets the boy, strikes up a conversation. Sefa Lorenz is mumbling something about reckless risks for questionable purposes. Approaches the beast, lifeless corpse, and starts performing some calculations. Meanwhile, the general decides it's the perfect moment to learn more about centaurs. The centaur says his name is Royoko, but it sounds more like a nickname than a real one. He is manifestly stunned by the courage of Baron Van and his people. He hesitantly prepares to go on his way, explaining that the tribe might soon notice his absence, and he might be punished for talking to the two-legged. The general delicately manages to get some further information from him, but for the most part, it only amounts to what the team has already knows. But they learn that in the centre belongs to the Nomad tribe, and the leader is one Ayakora Silverfire. A name, Royko, uh, speaks with the fiery awe of youth. The Nomad Centaurs consider themselves guardians of this land, and they stand ready to defend it from any evasion. Royko also tells them, with a sigh, that the tribe is very small, unlike in the olden days. War and disaster have taken their toll, and the other tribes no longer want to deal with the Nomad. Royko's words make it seem though as the other Centaur tribes consider his own tribe perhaps a little mad. Saying warm goodbyes to the young centaur, Baron Van nods, content with his own thoughts, and leads the party on to Van Hood. Yep. I do not like that Gunderson, even if he is not a spy. And mind you, I still have my doubts. Vagabonds like him always bring trouble. I can't keep all the vagabonds from breaking their necks in the ruins. At least if he finds something interesting, he'll bring it to us, not Brevoy. Got a point. Hmm, a very, 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 very good point. No, we don't need rest because we're here. I don't know what happened if you start resting when the middle of loading. I hope it's not fucked that game up. That's all I need. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But yeah, that was probably the best. I didn't expect to fucking blow it though. Jesus. I think a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 players will know exactly what a bluet is. A bluet? I ran into that encounter myself and Jesus Christ. That was uh, challenging to say the least. Very challenging. So God knows what one's like. And Pathfinder. Oh wait a minute, I think we already fought one haven't we? That's right, I think we already, uh, I think we already I think we already fought one with um, a merry side quest, I think. Maybe, well, anyway, we completed the ripples in the water, and we do have a level up as well. Okay, false voice, that's for a second then. Okay, Valen's hot. After a daring raid into the lands of the wild centaurs, Baron Van and his companions return home, and I, Willis Gunderson, the honour of accompanying him. A time of peace has come at last. Van Holt grants one severe dawn after another, but in this dark land, I dread to think what awaits us. Yep, guess we'll find out in a second. 
That's the choir master. As Kajodi Ka uh, Ka approaches Van, a wince crosses her grim face, but she speaks not a word. Instead, hands him a document. Aha! I see you've included everything, just as I asked. Thank you, Kiadi. Kiadi. Kiadi, I remember that. Vega, what does this mean? Tell me, what am I to make of this? Sephel snatches the document from Van's hands. As he reads it, the old eyes wizard, uh, the old eyes wizard, the old wizard's eyes nearly pop out his head. I sent some much needed aid to our neighbors in the Shrike Hills. There are only possible allies in the coming carnage. Cephal, I know your opinion, but be realistic. The Aldori are not our friends. We can't count on them for help if something happens. We're expendable. That's to the main group. That's to the main file. You will not preach realism to me, you naive boy. Yes, we are bargaining chips to them. That is exactly what I'm basing my politics on. A delicate contraption which you are smashing to bits. War will come to Breville, even you can see that. But as long as it hasn't yet begun, you can scarcely do better than pretending to be the Eldori's most loyal vassals. We are seeing nothing. Listen to me carefully, you three. Yes, Yeri, this involves you too. Things are looking bad. First, the land here is fertile, but its most bountiful crop is Cyclope's graves. Second, it shares a border with the Ovaria, well known for its epidemics. Gods forbid the wind carries the next plague here. Settlers are reluctant to come here as it is. I can scarcely blame them. I didn't know the plural for Cyclops was Cyclopes. Hmm. I thought Cyclopi. Cyclopes. I us remember that. Do not become too attached to Varnhold. This is but a stepping stone. Our real prize lies to the west. But what does Varn do? He sends them gifts. Better to send them assassins. Without their baron, the Shrike Hills would descend into a struggle for power. And Silver Step in the Canelands would fall to us soon after. Right. Interesting. He's talking about us here. He's talking about the Baron in the main file. Again, we're not playing this through the eyes of Definite. We're playing this for the eyes of Kingsley. Stuart Kingsley. And as far as I'm aware, with Stuart Kingsley, he does not know who the Baron is. So, got to remember that. I have to remember that, especially playing him like a role-playing sort of thing with this. Such villainy. A second that. Do not interrupt your regent, Vaughn, or relieve me of the position this instant. Now, what is the most important thing here? The Aldori are afraid of unleashing war. They know that if they tried to separate from Brevoy without some kind of outside support, the Sertova would crush them. So, we must convince them that we are their most loyal allies. We will stoke the Aldori into an uprising. When the unrest picks up, we shall strike them in the back. And make them fight on two fronts. While you, Your Grace, were drinking wine at the feast, I was busy acquiring a map of Nivotka's Crossing. Well, look at these fortifications. If we could seize this town, we'd win a significant piece of Brevik land along with it. After we've assisted the Sertova in hanging the Aldori on the gates, they would allow us to keep part of what we've seized as reward. Then we will have peace and prosperity. Get out of my sight, Seffel. Get out! Never would the name of Magar Vaan be tarred with such abominable villainy. It never happened while I was leader of a mercenary party and won't happen now that I'm Baron. Great Asmodeus, what did I do to deserve this punishment? Why do I deal with you at all? I should have taken my share and retired a long time ago. I'll be off somewhere soon enough. Absalom or Cheliax. I shall read books on the porch and drink wine while you do whatever you want. Burn the city down and get yourself killed. Come to me later. We need to talk. I can't believe my ears. Must the history of our country begin with such villainy? Oh, Seth. Seth. Ah. Uh. Let the old devil cool off. 
I'll talk to him later. Is that all, Kiadi? The dwarf shrugs and hands him another paper. I see. So, we've got a revolutionary from Galt on our hands. A tavern keeper writes us. She saw the revolutionary walking around, stirring up the people for an uprising. Well, you're the general. You go and deal with it. Talk to the tavern keeper. Find out where to look for this instigator. Well, far be it from me to teach you how to do your job. When you finish, report back to me. By the gods, what a worry. Uprisings, intrigues, these damn letters. That Gunderson and his bracelet. And the Baron has to see to all of that and listen to everyone's complaints while he's at it. What a nuisance. Make our leaves of the cloud of curses. Interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Right, well, suppose we better go talk to uh, Cephal, since that's what he wants. Oh, that mega. I was so angry with him. Why do I still bother? I should have left the party after that idiocy in Udoslav. Or at least after the debacle in Mivon. If I had any sense, I would never have gotten involved at, at all. Hmm. What do you think about this gunson? I could not see any point to keeping that loafer in the capital. To hear him singing about his questionable feats at the tavern, or flirting with anything that moves. People like him can't be useful. Out there in the ruins, where they crawl around after discovering interesting facts and useful items, I would give him a half-empty purse, perhaps even a bit of magical gear, and send him on back on the road. If fortune favoured him, he might return with something interesting, if not the good riddance. And that bracelet is scrounged up in fact quite interesting in itself. It's not magical, no, but it may point to an ancient Cyclops treasure, a riches far worth more than gold. I would like you to show this artifact to a knowledgeable historian, but where would you find one in this backwater? Yeah. You want to talk about something? Yes. That puffed up Vulvan is destroying this barony faster than he can build it. An alliance with our nest and weavers. Western. Oh, nest and weavers? <laughs> There we go again with the back to front bloody first letters of words. Uh, with our western neighbours is madness. And now he's sending them gifts? He takes resources we work so hard to obtain and which are so scarce around here and gives them away freely to our principal adversary. You usually keep away from arguments but now I want to hear what you have to say. Uh, maybe it really is better uh, retire. Why should I stand watch as everything I have built these many years crumbles to ruins? I don't know what to do with him, or even how to talk to him. Tell me, what do you think of this madness? God, I'll see. To see it, Mega's reckless, but he farts and won't drag this in Nature's venture. Mega's diplomacy may yet play into your plans. If he convinces our neighbours that we're friends, they'll drop the guard and get out by surprise. Lady Jumanji wants to use us, but she makes no secret of her intentions. She's going to only have a key free as the neighbours and interests. Who? I was thinking more and more often, do we really need Van? Maybe you and I could rule Van all without him. Oh, okay, that was interesting. Okay. What would Stuart say? What would Stuart think? Let's see. So he's lawful neutral, meaning that he stays neutral within the situations, but he's also lawful because he stays by the rules. Personally, Mega is reckless, but you do need a bit of that mixed with benevolency. And to be honest, Mega is kind of that. He's not afraid to get his boots dirty for the good and the barony. But at the same time, I do agree with Sethel as well, because, you know, you do need a little bit of integrity, a little bit of espionage, a little bit of secrecy with what we're doing. So I'm trying not to think of death now, because obviously, like... Definitely is like, what, lawful good, neutral good, kind of swing between the two. So, I think for Stuart, I think he, he's been pretty much kept out of the arguments. He wants nothing to do with his, doing his role as a general. So, I think... I think trying to... I think trying to pick the right choice to keep these two together is probably in his best interest, I think. So, let's see. Uh, you see Omega's Reckless Fight? Nope, that's out of the goal. That's out of the goal. So, I'm gonna say... Yeah. Omega's Diplomacy may yet play into your plans. 
If he convinces our neighbours that we're friends, they'll drop the gun and we can start by surprise. Or we can even unite and attack Rawson together. Yes, this is true. But if we do enter an alliance with them against the Aldori, then we will never take Silver Step. And I do so wish to have a mansion on his shores. And you know, Van, he's not the kind to make alliances only to backstab later. Hmm. Perhaps we should send an instigator to our neighbours to persuade them to attack us first, to give us cause for annexation. I need to think. Yep, how's it go? Yes, you and I are both busy people now. What a joke. To be advisors to a baron who does doing everything as power to destroy his own state. Sure, I guess. Was that my timer, by the way? Uh, no, nope. timer is about to go away in a second. And do you know what? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to end this off with a level up <laughs> of cows and other matters of political importance. Plan the troublemaker, yeah. Right, I think what we're going to do is we're going to end this off with a level up. Level neutral? Yeah, just checking. All right, let's go level up. Okay, so let's see. So Fae Warden 6 is going to give us a combat feat. And do we get second level spells? Nope, we still get first level spells. When do we get second level spells? Uh, I don't know. Oh, eighth level, looks like. Yeah, eighth level. Right, yep, I guess we're gonna go range of six. That's fine. Right, three points. Yeah, let's go trickery, uh, persuasion, and use magic advice. Yeah, that's my time now. We'll get finished in a second or two. Two on a weapon, so we can choose between cleave, uh, standard action, no, furious focus. When you're wielding a two handed weapon or using one handed weapon with two hands and using the power attack for you, do not suffer power attacks, penalty, and melee attack rolls on the first attack you made each turn. Hmm, maybe not. We got power attack already, Sunder Armor. No. Yeah, let's go furious focus. That'll probably work. And we get some spells. Okay, um. Summon Nietzsche's Alley 1. Wrecking Bow, Long Strider, Aspect of the Falcon, that's a well, range attacks, but you're not really using range. Magic Fang is on natural weapons or on up strikes, plus one has bonus. No. Resist energy. No. Breakable heart. Same for us. No. Uh sure, let's say summon Nature's Alley 1. They can give us some extra summons if need be. Fierce focus and that. We can attack twice already, nice. Right, and you know what? I think we'll end it here. So that was actually really, really, really good timing. That was pretty cool then. Right, okay, so in the next episode, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to be doing is we're going to try and find this troublemaker, as well as talk to some people and do a little bit of shopping. And I guess we're kicking off, quote, quote, act two of the Van Hold Lots DLC. And I have to admit, I'm enjoying it up to now. Like I said, it's a different taste, it's a different story, different character. I'm always up for playing, for, I'm always up for playing new characters and games and stuff so so cool them right so anyway my friends thank you so much for watching today's episode please like and subscribe if you haven't already it helps with the channel's algorithm and you'll be notified when i upload links down below check them out if you wish and apart from that enjoy the rest of your awesome day and i'll see you next time take care